what had happened, and I'm going to use one of your words, Willie, and I tagged in and got up there, let them would look at me and go, well, who is this joker? <laughs> he don't know Mr. Tillman, and they'd be right. I didn't know Mr. Tillman. I saw the man one time when he came in here and visited us. So I didn't know him. I didn't know what he did for a living. I didn't know what his favorite food was. I didn't know which shoes he liked to wear on Sunday. I didn't know that. So how do I get to say, hey, I'll go right on in and, and, and take your place right there. And I shared this with Willie about, well, see, Willie, I don't know your father. I can't talk about your father so much, but see, I know you. I know the son. So if I know Willie and we have a connection, I would think that his father would be, that's my son who I love and trust. And if he trusts that man to be his friend, I'm open to him. Isn't there a parallel going there, Pastor Bob? So that's how, you, that's how you're able to say, I'll jump right on in. I'll talk about your father. See, but that's what we do also as a Christian. Some people like to take the father and put the father here. And they take the son and they put him here. And they separate the two. Well, yeah, I, I believe in Christ, but I just, I just don't know God. Well, how's that? So we separate the two. Or... They just don't feel adequate enough to talk about God. Well, what do you mean? If you know the Son, you therefore know the Father. If you're a friend, a co-heir of the Son, you obviously have to be friendly and a son of the Father. Is that right? Let's hear it then. Let's hear it. So we got that friendship. So a lot of people who aren't ready, you know, you talked about a lot of people were, yeah, you know, I, I, I know God. I believe in God. I believe in God. Well, so you've accepted Christ as your Savior? Oh, no. Wait a minute now. You know God. You think you know God, but you don't know God. You truly only know God when you accept what he became. See, we got to put it down out of the fairy tale mind perception that people have about the book and put it into reality. Because it's the book of truth. The book of love and the book of truth. So, now if you go down to that format of, okay, the sun, the sun, and you get into, okay, I... Yeah, I believe in that. I believe in the Son. Well, once you do that, once that commitment's there, it's a wide open relationship with the Father. Now, see, a lot of this, we have to, we, we get our minds involved too much, don't we, Pastor Bob? And we want to figure it all out. Well, what does this mean, the Father, the Son, He's one and the same, He's a Spirit? Relax. Relax. Just think about it. Creation itself. When I always, when I have my little, que and listen, questions are fine. Don't ever sit there and feel like you can't ask the pastor or a teacher, a minister, a question. Okay? You don't know nothing unless you ask something. Okay? So if you have a question about something, ask. Ask. And if the person who answers you gives you that, well, that's a stupid question, or you know that you shouldn't ask that stuff, run away and find a man or woman of God who knows how to answer your question. Okay? So, we'll have questions about all this stuff, the Father, the Son, but I always kind of break it down when myself goes into question mode, because you know, I just want to know. I just want to know some things. But I always break it down to this. This great, vast universe just didn't evolve. There ain't no way that something is so perfect that wasn't created. 
And that's how I always bring myself back down to the middle of the road. There ain't no way to explain that perfect creation other than that there is a God who called it into existence. That's the only way to do it. It's just that I think about our earth, you know, and you think about, ain't nothing wrong with environmentalists, but the environmentalists who are way over there in left field that think man's going to destroy this earth, who do you think you are that you think you can destroy the planet that God molded and made that he said, my people are going to inhabit this place? Who are we to think we're going to destroy that? So I'd say to all the environmentalists who are way in left field, it's going to be all right. <laughs> Do your due diligence, but everything's going to be okay. So we got to know, we got to break it down to what is it about. So let's get into John, and you go to John 10, 24. We'll be, well, John 10, 24 through 30. Now, if you want to know a little bit about Jesus, he tells you some stuff about him in John, some pretty serious stuff about him. Here we go. So the Jews surrounded him and began asking him, how long are you going to keep us in doubt and suspense? If you are really the Christ, the Messiah, tell us so plainly and openly. Isn't that something? <laughs> he was walking around plainly and openly. He was performing miracles plainly and openly. He was witnessing to the people plainly and openly. But all of a sudden, his demand is to be plain and open. So, yeah. <laughs> so Jesus answered them, I have told you so, yet you do not believe me. You could stop there and park, couldn't we, Pastor Bob? You do not trust me and rely on me. The very works that I do by the power of my Father and in my Father's name bear witness concerning me. They are my credentials and evidence in support of me. That's powerful there. I like that. Go on to the next one. But you do not believe and trust and rely on me because you do not belong to my fold. You are no sheep of mine. The sheep that are my own hear and are listening to my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. They follow me. How do you want to succeed and be, be, be something in this life? Just follow Jesus. Simple. Next one. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never lose it or perish throughout the ages. To all eternity they shall never by any means be destroyed, and no one is able to snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater and mightier than all else, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. Here we go. I and the Father are one. Hey. Hey. If you believe the Bible is accurate and true, then you don't need to question, well, the Father, the Son, how do you... Don't worry about it. I and the Father are one. The thing that messes up our human mind is that he manifested... By the way, the God who created all this universe that we still don't even know nothing about, you don't think he can't manifest himself into human form? He did. I and the Father are one. So how do you get up there, Charlie, Joker, and talk about a man you don't know? I know the Son. And by virtue of knowing the Son, I know the Father. I didn't say I know everything about him. I didn't say I comprehend everything about him. But I know him. I know him. And as you go through life, the goal is to get to know him more and more and more and more. Okay? Get on to John 14, 20 and 21.
John 14, 20, 21. See what old Jesus got to say. At that time, when that day comes, you will know for yourselves that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Kind of puts it all together, don't it? You ain't got to scratch your head. You ain't got to wonder about it. He's just telling us right there. Okay? Next one. The person who has my commands and keeps them is the one who really loves me. You want to really get closer to God? You want to really follow Jesus? Then just follow what he tells you. There's no proof work you got to get out there and how many times you got to run around the building, how many people you got to say. How... The person who has my commands and keeps them is the one who really loves me. And whoever really loves me will be loved by my Father. See there? I just said that a minute ago. And I too will love him and will show, reveal, manifest myself to him. I will let myself be clearly seen by him and make myself real to him. See, as you grow and mature and study and meditate, and just really get closer, he becomes, as Pastor Bob says so many times, more real to you. More real to you. Tangible. He becomes so real that you feel him inside of you. Because that's what he said. He's inside of us. His Holy Spirit is inside of us. And if inside of you, you, you start to feel that a little bit. Just the way you feel a pain in your body. Just the way you feel your, you like to feel your emotions all the time. We love that part. So just open yourself up to feel Jesus inside of you. How about that part a little bit? Just like we were talking about during the day, love your enemy. So, yeah, but, well, no, no, it didn't say any of that. It just said love your enemies. You got to listen. Ain't no need to read it. If you ain't going to apply it in your life. Amen. I'm going to tell you again. Yeah. Ain't no need to read it. If you're not going to apply it. Alright. So don't be carrying it around like it's a prized possession. If you don't want to apply it in your life. May as well just throw it on the bookshelf and forget about it. The living word. This is a book with some print on it. But the words, as you read them and impart them into your life, they become living. Right? Amen. Exactly. Let's get on, switch back a little bit to John 5, 19. And we'll go through 23. How can you speak about the Father? So John 5, 19 through 23. Here we go again. Jesus tells some people some stuff. So Jesus answered them by saying, I assure you, most solemnly, I tell you, the Son is able to do nothing of himself of his own accord, but he is able to do only what he sees the Father doing. Did y'all catch that? Did y'all did y'all catch that part? The son is able to do nothing of himself of his own accord, but he is able to do only what he sees the father doing. Hmm. How is this word, the written word, how are you applying it inside of you? And how does that emit itself? You can talk the talk, but if everyone sees you walking a different walk, you've blown that part. Amen. You want to be a leader, and you can stand there and give the instructions, and then if you're out there walking all crooked, you've got a bunch of crooked people following you. Right. 
You got that? But he is able to do only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does is what the Son does in the same way in his turn. The parallel is right there. Oh, I can feel the condemnation and the hide and woe. I get behind here, Pastor Bob. <laughs> Don't get stuck there. Don't get stuck. There's so many things I wish my son hadn't seen me doing. Because I don't want him to follow me in that way. Amen. So you got to come back and correct it. And if you're doing more things that you don't want your son seeing you do, than you're seeing him, that you want to see him, you doing, you better really let that word become life and work on you and spin you around some. So he sees the father, what he sees the father doing. Whatever the Father does is what the Son does in the same way. So again, how can I speak about the Father? I know the Son. That's simple. That's simple. God, the creator of the universe, my creator. An intimate relationship, how? Through the Son. Through the Son. Through the Son. If you're friendly with me, boy, you're friendly with my father. I love it. Next one, there we go. The father dearly loves the son and discloses to, shows him everything he himself does. There we go again. Everyone's looking. We got a great pastor, and you know what? You could see that if he never, ever says another word in this place. If he ever, never preaches another message, you can still see what he is. Mark it down. So he clearly loves the son, discloses, shows him everything that he himself does. And he will disclose to him, let him see greater things yet than these. So that you may marvel and be full of wonder and astonishment. Remember what I was talking about? How I kind of put it all back into perspective. I just contemplate this vast creation. This whole thing <laughs> spoke into existence. I just bring it back down. Wow. And he wants a relationship with me? This guy can do all that? And I'm his best friend. Ah, that's some good stuff, man. <laughs> so when you, listen, when you're looking on your Facebook and you ain't got that many friends, forget all that, man. You got the best friend in the world, man. In the world. Best friend you ever had. Ah, oh, I tell you what. Wonder and astonishment. You know, your friends can help you out in a tough spot physically, you know, with some things. But, boy, Jesus can help you out in every situation, every circumstance. So that's why you should praise him when it's good and praise him when it's bad. If you learn to praise him when it's bad, you'll be praising him in some good times more. That's how good of a friend he is. Next verse. They'll calm me down before I get smart started in here now. Jesus, as the Father, raises up the dead and gives them life, makes them live on. Even so, the Son also gives life to whomever he wills and is pleased to give it. Remember, y'all say, we, I'm just trying to find Jesus. <laughs> now He's looking for you. <laughs> Where are they at out there? Hey! Where are they at? But you act like you're looking for him. Whoo! I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna part there, Pastor Ball. <laughs> Next one. Even the Father judges no one, for he has given all judgment. Now, do I need to repeat that again? Even the Father judges no one. 
let me tell you how good of a friend you got. The Father judges no one, for he has given all judgment, the last judgment in the whole business of judging, entirely into the hands of the Son. Woo! You think your friend, the judge's friend, you got is something? Look at the one I got. All right? Look at my advocate with the Father. That's some power. Let me read that again. I don't know if you know how powerful that is yet. Even the Father judges no one, for he has given all judgment, the last judgment in the whole business. I like that. The whole business of judging entirely into the hands of the Son. Woo! I'm going to tell you something. The day you accepted Christ, you don't know what you did, man. You got into something good. And if you're here and you haven't, you're going to come up here and see us today and get into this business. All right? This is good stuff. Next one. And why so? So that all men may give honor, reverence, homage to who? The Son. Just as they give honor to the Father. Mm-hmm. There's that divide again. Yeah, I know God. I love, yeah, I, I read my Bible. Yeah. I, well, have you been saved? What? Well, I'm going to heaven. No, no, I didn't ask you that. I said, have you been saved? See, you ain't going to heaven if you ain't been saved. I don't care how much you think you know God. Satan knows God better than we know God. And look where he is. Okay? That should be proof enough right there. So, so that all men may give honor, reverence, homage to the Son, just as they give honor to the Father. In fact, whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who has sent him. You know, and, and I shared this with Willie, you know, and Pastor Bob's done many. I've done a few perform funeral services. So people will come up and ask me to perform it. And most of the time I know them, but sometimes you don't. So I know Pastor Bob, and I, so I go and, well, I need to ask you a couple of questions. I don't want you to get offended. But was the brother or sister saved? And Pastor Bob has seen this look, and I've seen it too. They don't know. They can't answer the question. So don't you know that the, the, the service, I can't just go get in there and say, listen, here they are, absent, absent, um, I can't say that, because that's reserved for who? The Christians. And if I do that, I'm blaspheming God myself. But see, that's what people want, the feel good part. The worldly part, the, well, you know, we die, we go to heaven. Who said that? Did you read that in Scripture anywhere? That everyone who dies goes to heaven? Is that in there, Pastor Bob? Hmm. So you don't. See, this is real business. This is real truth. This isn't feel-good stuff. Your emotions have nothing to do with the Bible. How the world perceives life and death has nothing to do with the Scripture. The truth is the truth. So when we get in a situation like that, I have to do the service, I have to do it, but I don't cross the line, and I just flow it the way it should flow, and I use it as a witnessing testimony. But if you can't speak on that brother or sister, where if they've gone to the kingdom or not, the best thing to do is not say nothing then. You see what I'm saying? Now, the funeral service is usually, it ain't for the person there, it's for the people out here. And see, people just want to please the people out here. Well, I'll perform this thing and I'll make them feel good. I'll make them feel good and cozy, you know, because in death, I want them to feel all right. Well, if you're a Christian already, you ought to feel okay about death already. And if you ain't there, let us minister to you and tell you more about what God says about it. Okay, because this ain't the end of the story. 
In fact, I can't wait to get rid of this old carcass, rest, and then get my new body later on. I like it. How am I confident in this? 11 years old. I asked Jesus into my life. And from that moment on, I was completely confident that the whole truth was written right in them pages. And then I started applying it. Applying it. Charlie, how can you get up there and talk about a man you don't know like you know him? And I know the son. I know the son. You ain't got to be at no certain level, okay? You just get that embedded into your body, into your spirit, that you know the Son. You know the Son. Mm. Let's flip over to 1 John. 1 John 3, 1 and 2. You know, I'd love to have been around when Jesus was walking around just to hear him. Because, you know, fairy tale land probably presents it real. Yeah, I'm Jesus and I want to tell you. And I can just see it this way. Y'all need to listen to what I'm telling you. You understand? <laughs> That's the way I perceive it. Because I want the truth, like Pastor Bob says. I want you to tell me directly what I need to know. I don't need the candy cane effect. The little sugar powdery stuff flowing all over the place. I just want to know. Here we go. See what an incredible quality of love the Father has given, shown, bestowed on us, that we should be permitted to be named and called and counted the children of God. I like that now. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Woo, that'll get you for a minute. And so we are. You ain't gonna, you ain't gotta, hey, there's no struggle about it. And so we are. You righteous? Yes. I want to hear it better than that. You've been made righteous through Christ. You're more than a conqueror. You're not a tail, you are the head. You're circumstance in life does not dictate your position get that embedded in you what the world says you are does not dictate your position and so we are the reason that the world does not know recognize acknowledge us is that it does not know recognize him you ever wonder when you're trying to witness someone why they just don't get it? That's right. They don't know the, the father or the son. So you have mercy on them. Your heart starts bleeding for them people. that They are so blinded. I don't want to be so blinded I can't hear the truth. Much less see the truth. See it. So they don't know. They don't recognize and acknowledge him. Next verse. Beloved, we are even here now God's children. It is not yet disclosed, made clear what we shall be hereafter. But we know that when he comes and is manifested, we shall as God's children resemble and be like him. For we shall see him just as he really is. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> you know, at the end of the race, they wave the checker flag. Well, there's the checker flag right there. We're going to get to see him as he really is. All the doubts you doubt, forget about them. All the questions, they gone. Woo! Going to get to see him as he really is. And so... That was it for that one. Sorry about that. John 16. Go to John 16. John, we all over John, huh? John 16, 25. 
I have told you these things in parables. Here we go now. Veiled language, allegories, dark sayings. The, remember when it's time to get off the milk and get into the meat? I think that's happening right here. The hour is now coming when I shall no longer speak to you in figures of speech. See, some of us get stuck on the milk part. I ain't ready for that meat. That's what I call this assembly. This is a, this is, this is a meat assembly. You know, some people would say, man, I wish more people were here. They can't take it. There's two things they can't take here. We say the truth. And this isn't a con- no condemnation, but we say the truth and we love people. All right? I don't care what else we don't get right or get wrong. Forget it. The two things I know we do here is we tell the truth and we love people. And people can't handle that. And if you double dose them with both of them, they really can't handle it. See, they mingle in bigger assemblies and all because you can kind of mingle and you're in and you're out and you ain't really got to be accountable or open. See, he's our pastor. Now, see, I'm a deacon for him. I'm accountable to him. I have to be responsive to him. I've got to be ready for him in and out of season for God and for my pastor. Pastor says, can you do the word? Yes, I can. Can you do that? Yes, I can. And if I can't, I need to say, no, I can't. So that's why people can't handle the truth and they can't handle the love. And that's a sad state to be in. So we got to have mercy. on The ones we don't see flocking in an assembly like this, pray for them. Because they're just meandering out there somewhere. Just, I don't want to be so open and exposed and, woo. And I don't mean about their personal life. I'm just talking about just, to, they can't handle being loved on. I mean, they just can't handle, who are these people, all these people hugging on me? They can't handle the breakdown. And then if you want the truth, they can't handle the truth. And that's why they, their relationship ain't there. Would, would man or Jesus? So I have told you these things in parables, but now the hour is coming when I shall no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but I shall tell you about the Father in plain words and openly. Plain words and open, just the truth. The truth. We ain't got to complicate it because it's simple and it's true. But men likes to put the spin on it or flip the page, rip a page out, take the black mark and black some of it out there, white out some and write something else in there. Yeah, and that's not applicable to me because I don't have to listen to nobody and nobody tells me and I ain't going to love my enemy. They, you don't know what they did to me. You know, we were talking back there about the enemy thing and I, I shared with them this you know, <laughs> better be careful, Pastor Paul. We have a lot of enemies based off our emotions. We have a lot of enemies based off our feelings. We got a lot of enemies based off the fact that they stepped on my toe one time. You got enemies in your mind that ain't even enemies. Because the definition we wrote back there is an enemy is someone who's hostile, who's trying to injure you, who's just out to just kill you, basically. I'm going to just tell you, I ain't got an enemy. I can't think of an enemy. Except Satan, the ultimate enemy. But as far as these, my fellow humans, I don't, I don't, if you're out there, just wave at me because I don't know you there. Now, that don't mean we have times and issues, we have, but an enemy? The day you start calling someone your enemy, you become hostile. Right, right. 
You become the enemy. You've let the enemy gain control of you. We spin it into a different message, Willie. <laughs> so don't put yourself in that category. Why does Jesus say to love my enemy? That's just nonsense. It don't make no sense. Yes, it does. You want to live and be free? That's how you do it. If you can love your enemy, you a free person. You ain't got no offensive spirits in, in you if you can love your enemy. You don't care when someone does you wrong. You know what? Just like Pastor Paul, just go out there and shake the tree for a minute if you got to. And be done with it. <laughs> or like Miss Susan would do. Go tell God on them. In your closet. Get in there and tell them. Don't you think the, the, the God who created all this stuff can take care of them, son? I mean, small potatoes, man. That's nothing for him. And you over there worrying about it, carrying it around on your shoulder all the time. Like it's a pet. Well, you know, 1975, he did me wrong. I know y'all out there now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Didn't acknowledge me that day last week. Mm-hmm. Walked right on by me. Oh. Mmm, emotions, bubbly stuff. <laughs> Don't make decisions about enemies based off your emotions. Okay? All right? So we got there, 25. So where am I at again? Got to catch me back up. But I shall tell you about the Father in plain words and openly. And that's what we do here. Plain words and openly. Next one. At that time you will ask, pray in my name. Catch this now. And I am not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf, for it, it will be unnecessary. Huh? Let me read it again. At that time you will ask, pray in my name. And I am not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf, for it will, not be, none, it will be unnecessary. Why is that? Why would that, the Father, the Son, mmm, they're one. He's up there in the heavenlies now. He's not here on this earth having to make, he's there. And the Bible says to do what? Pray in Jesus' name. Listen, it doesn't say, and listen, there's no condemnation. We've all been there. We all do this. And, and, and amen. Or in your name. Well, whose name? Just go ahead and say it. If someone wants you to pray, they've given you the floor. You pray and you let it out and you let it rip. And in, in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you're not willing to do that, just zip your lip. Zip your lip. We ain't got to cater to the feelings. The Bible, listen, it, it's clear. It, who, whose name, Pastor Bob? Whose name do we pray in? Jesus' name. No other. No other. So if you, if you, if you get the floor, the invitation to pray... That's what you're going to do. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you struggled in that area because you felt like, I better be politically correct about this, that's all right. Go forward in Jesus' name, though. All right? Again, Jesus, he'll protect you. You ain't worried about all that stuff. Just do what you're supposed to do. Jesus' name. All right. Next one. For the Father himself tenderly loves you because you have loved me. That's Jesus talking. Really? 
Willie's father, not knowing me, would be open arms to me. Why? Because me and the son have a relationship. We don't know, me and Willie don't know each, much about each other as far as our lives, but spirit to spirit, just a nice flow, nice flow. Because you have loved me and have believed that I have come out from the Father. If you're on the fence about the Father and the Son, get off. Dive in. Because he's one. Absolutely one. Next verse. I come out from the Father and have come into the world again. I am leaving the world and going to the Father. Going back home. Rightful throne. Pray in Jesus' name. Father, Son, Spirit. It's Him. That's God. How do you know the Father? Because I know the Son. Again, I ain't waiting until I know everything about the Father to say I know Him. I just know Him because I know the Son. And it opens up more and more to me. I learn more and more about him. More and more about him. So, no need to make petitions when he's right there. So again, get down to the facts of if you've accepted Christ as your personal Savior, everything is open to you. You don't have to wait on the priest, the pastor, the minister. you got direct line of communication. It's better than these smartphones we got. I mean, you ain't got to wait on the smartphone battery. you got a direct communication. You ain't got to log into Facebook. You ain't got to wait till your friend tells you what you should say. You got a direct communication with the Father provided through the Son. So that's why if you're ever asked to speak about the Father, don't freeze. Because if you know the Son, you know everything you need to know about the Father. You got it? And if you can talk all day long on the phone with your friends, you can spend a few moments talking about God Amen. through His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I guarantee you can muster it up to do it. Because the world is spitting everything else out to you. You can get all that you want 24-7. But once in a while, you just got to spit some of this back out to them. Just let them have it. In Jesus' name. That's a powerful... Ain't no need to pray if you ain't going to pray in Jesus' name because it's meaningless. It does. There's no fruit involved in that. There's no fruit involved in prayer without Jesus' name involved. I didn't say it. He said it. The creator of the universe said, that's his instructions he told me. And out of my faith through the Son, I believe it. I don't comprehend it all. I don't need to. If my father said to me, son, I'm going to tell you this because it's good for you, I didn't stand there and go, well, how do you know? Maybe it's good for you and not me. No. I just fully believed that the man was telling me the truth. And if my earthly father can tell me the truth, I know without a doubt that God, the father, is the complete truth about anything he tells me. No mistakes, no exceptions. Ain't you glad it ain't based off his emotions? Mmm. Because there was a time this race was about done. But a powerful thing happened. Here came the sun. And I ain't talking about that sun we're looking out there now. I'm talking about the physical manifestation. The redemption. 
and all that vastness of everything is through one person, Jesus Christ. He's like the greatest tool you could ever find at Lowe's. You ever wanted a tool that can do everything? You know, you're looking around, I can't find this tool, you know. Boy, he is the greatest tool you'll ever have in your tool chest. I mean, just ready. I mean, he, he's, a, he's a flathead screwdriver. He's a Phillips head. He's a torque wrench. He's everything. He's a flashlight. He's an air pump. He's everything you need. Psychologist, physician, interpreter. He's everything. And how much does he think of me to say, listen, Charles, if you have a relationship for me, everything my father has is yours. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. It, 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 it's, listen, there's no attorney got some writing in here saying, now, listen, co-heir, but you can't have this. You can't. It doesn't say that. Co-heir. 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 Everything that belongs to him belongs to you. Everything. Everything. Things we don't understand. Things we just can't wrap our mind around. Things we just call out but we don't see yet. It's still there. It's all there. It's all there. So when Pastor Bob says this, when he asks the assembly, who's ready right now? And I always raise I mean it. I mean it. I'm ready to keep on going, but I'm ready when it's over. I'm ready. I'm ready. Because I got Jesus on my side. I got him in me. I got him for me. What a friend. What a friend. Wide open. Wide open. So don't hesitate to tell people about the Father. Because if you've accepted the Son... You are loved by the Father. You're completely, openly accepted, and everything is there for you. You know how you've maybe felt in life like you can't approach someone, you can't approach your dad right now, and he's never like that. He's never mad that he can't listen to you, or don't, don't, don't talk to your dad right now, he's, he's over there. No, no, he, there's no, there's no limitation there. The only limitation is you. You are the only limitation to your communication with the Father. If you've accepted the Son, it's completely wide open. Again, that battery ain't going to die. The reception isn't going to fade. Nothing's in your way. No valley, no hill, nothing. No Old Satan can't even get in your way. Ain't got nothing for you. Nothing for you. He's the father of lies, but we believe in the father of truth. Yeah. So, Willie, thank you for wanting me to share that. And I hope it came across a little different. You know, it's just there for you. And you ain't got to get all complicated theology. You ain't got to forget all that stuff. He made a way, a provision. And if you believe that provision, then you've accepted his son. You are accepted by the father. You're a complete unit. You're a family. Family. See, some people got God on a pedestal still, like they're looking up all the time. And he's like, why ain't you in the photo up here with me? I mean, you're missing from the photo. And he's up there looking for you in the photo. Get in the photo. You know, your father you grew up with, you didn't always hide from your father, right? You ran to your father. Our heavenly father is waiting for you to run to him. Run to me, run to me. Every day, all the moments of your day, he's, come on. Come get in the photo with me. I love him. He's been good to me. I'm just trying to do my best to be good to him. 
And I thank him for what he's done in my life. Thank you.